one of the best ways to learn this Mulabandha action is to attempt to do it in all the sending poses. Okay. But here, the fingers move away from each other, hip bones can move towards each other. If around that axis I rotate the block, those two points move away from each other. If I rotate the blocks in, they move towards each other. Although in normal language you call it that movement, actually it's a circular movement. It is not a lateral movement. So lateral movement would be like this. Okay. Medial movement would be like this. Okay. Now you can combine both. Circularly I move away from each other, but medially I move towards each other. Okay. That is one of the action. So that if these are my sit bones, okay. pelvic is a little more complex because this is what happens in the pelvis. Okay. But it is still a circular motion. Circularly I move away from each other, medially I move towards each other. So if I sit in Tandasana, rotating the thighs in, untucking the pelvis is a circular motion. Circularly, my sit bones are moving away from each other. I, can, I don't let go of that. That continues, but even as the circular movement continues, I engage the sit bones towards each other and lift the perineum up. Okay. Perineum in this example would be the point between the two blocks. Okay. Sit in the confused, clear. Is the concept clear? Yes. Um, not that simple. Circularly moving away from each other, yeah. which has to do with rotation of the thigh and tightening of the pelvis. Yeah. So circularly I'm moving from it. So that circular movement continues, but then I bring the sit bones to the other. So medially the sit bones move in, um, circularly they separate. Okay. The concept has to be clear. The actual movement may take a little time to, to come. So even with your hands, you can move the sit bones away from each other. We call it away, but it's really circular movement. As the pelvis still is forward a little, lumbar is in normal position, normal lordosis. To begin with, rotating the thighs in, untucking the pelvis. Maximize the circular movement away from each other of the sit bones. Then continue that movement, breathing freely, continue that movement of circularly moving the sit bones away from each other, but medially bring them together and engage the Murubandha, engage the perineum. If you sit like that for a long period, your legs may get tired. But the effect of sitting like that is never felt in being tired in the lumbar. Lower back doesn't get tired. If the perineum collapses, sooner or later your back will get tired. But now my legs are not working. I'm sitting like a happy Buddha. <laughs> my back will hurt. Back will get tired. But nothing happens to that. You're not using your back at all to set up your lower back. I won't say at all, but I'm to using my back much less. Okay. I keep remembering the famous song, these legs are made for work. <laughs> the work is much lower down in the pelvis. If I bring it up, then the back gets up. So does the back work? Not at all, no. It will still work, but much less. So it's efficient working work. Someone like my teacher in Sangal might say, you people are working your back, I'm not working your back. Directly yeah. speaking, true, but the back will have to work. Because the vertical lift will not come by doing the work. But the concept. Between Bhadrakonasana and Dattasana, as far as the work we are doing right now is concerned, engaging the 
the biggest difficulty here is that the thighs are rotated out. So the leg rotation doesn't directly help. And yet, that is where you want to begin the work. Rotate the thigh in. Even though to get into Bhadrakanasana, you are going out. Rotate the thighs in. If that is done, then by rotating the thighs in, untucking the pelvis, and still taking the sit bones circularly away from each other. But until the thighs rotate in, it will be difficult to do that. Too many friends sit in Bhadrakanasana to sit correctly, push the floating ribs forward. That is not Bhadrakanasana. That is, there is no name for that question. Sit erect by all means, but not by simply pushing the ribs forward. It's a leg action. Then, like you did in Dandasana, only to a lesser degree, continuing circular separation of the sit bones, medially bring the sit bones towards each other. Without using your eyes, ears, tongue to do that. As far as remote viewing is concerned, the relationship here is I am somehow trying to make my breath deeper. The more complete the breath works, the more complete my engagement, correct engagement with all the senses is. So then I can be open to the possibility of remote viewing. As I said earlier, remote viewing can be done. All these people that you read the books written by these people, they are able to do it. But it's not complete. Because the experience of the breath and accepting it is not complete. And again, if I sit for a long period like this, my legs may get tired. My back doesn't get tired. Long before the back says, I'm tired, my legs keep going. In the last. One of the best ways to learn this Mulabandha action is to attempt to do it in all the standing poses. But here, the fingers move away from each other, hip bones can move towards each other. In standing poses, that is not very clear, so come and watch what it means in standing poses to move the fingers away from each other. And guess what? You think on our favorite one, Come, every time, we can ask some distress. Here, the boys are often to swim us away from each other in one towards each other. What does it mean? On this leg, swim us away from each other is as though her legs are like this. So femur away from each other, for this leg means the femur goes that way. On the back leg, femur away from each other would mean femur goes this way. So the top femur here is moved this way, here is moved up. It's not a motion, it's an action, otherwise it would distort the body. Do you understand me? This femur sits near the outside of the wall here. This femur sits near the outside of the wall. Because the legs are rotated out, that's that's the way you do it. And you want to do the second side? Often taught, and in my view incorrectly, you are taught to bring this stream and follow. That is not the action. The action is the simple moves forward, the female moves back. And to experience that we will take a stick. Yeah. The 
the stick will push the femur back. The more you move the sit bone forward, the more the stick will push the femur back. Thank God for Newton. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And work is if you're strong enough. Right. Move your, not your, femur will automatically push the sit bone. Move your sit bone forward towards me more, yes, like that. More. And more. And a little more. And since I'm in China students, I can even get you to do that. Okay. <laughs> Does not come forward, the sit bone comes forward. This is a tucking action of the pelvis. Too many people do a huge back bend here. Slight back bend will happen by the nature of the anatomical structure, but not a large step. And carefully come on. The rest of the action is similar to the first step. Imagine a stick. So this femur does not move forward towards me. This femur goes towards the sit. Femurs away from each other, two hip bones have to rotate towards each other. Another very long instruction given, even by my wonderful teacher, rotate the sit back. If you do that, you are jamming the sacrum. Apple jam, apricot jam, sacrum jam, one of the three is back. Don't jam the second. So it's not that this hip moves back, but this hip bone circularly rotates forward. This hip bone, just like the femur, moves away. So there is a space here. But don't jam the second. So this instruction often given: rotate this back, rotate this back. Not a correct instruction. It's, it's a wrong instruction. If you do that, if you do Thrikonasana lying like down, you will immediately sense rotating that femur out that way, that hip bone out that way, feels a jamming sensation in the say, Any comment? What instruction would you give if the pelvis is too far back? Because a lot of times it is like femur forward to move the pelvis. Is it pelvis forward? Yeah. Forward or. No, I would say imagine the wall behind you, stay with the wall. Mm -hmm. So do it against the wall. And sometimes if people are not getting that, they say, do the same thing basically. Both away from each other. 
It shoots a femur of the front leg, falls back behind you. The femur of the back leg moves towards the ceiling or towards the back wall. Keeping the two femurs moving away from each other, rotate the two hip bones towards each other, minimize the compression or lateral compression on the second. I have seen, there is a very good photograph taken of that also. My, my teacher, Mr. Anger, Doing this, it fit very well, like almost Anuanasana kind of thing. There, the second would be very wide. The rest of the actions are very similar to what you do in that dancing. Femurs are there from each other, it points towards each other, keeping the sacrum wide open. See the energy of that sacrum goes to the tailbone, create space in front of the tailbone, release the tailbone forward. Do not push the tailbone forward ever, release it forward.